I'll go through actually getting Ortho to X plane here set up and running and doing all the fun stuff with it. So let's get it. folders open. So initially when you download Ortho to X plane, I go ahead and unzip it. Go to my old install. I got the new one off of the author's Dropbox, and I'll go ahead when I put these up on YouTube. I will have all the links and all the funness there. So you'll have a folder like this, and if you go into the install, I'm in the Win64. Um, hopefully, you're not getting any more drop frames or lagginess at this point. Is going to be a text file in here and it's not going to look this pretty because there's no carriage returns in it. I went ahead and actually fixed that. So this is readable now. The big thing is image magic and Python um, and this redistributable you may or may not have. This is optional. You may not need to download the wheel files. We're going to do this the non-wheel file way. If it doesn't work, go download the wheel files and I'll show the, and go through and do what it says to install it from the wheel files from the other PDF. Um, the other big problem with this is that the instructions to do this are in four different places, it seems, and that's kind of annoying. These are the four you're going to need, and we're going to skip a lot of the things it says to do in the PDF, and I'm going to point out what you can just ignore. So if we go into the manual, you go to the install instructions. There's a lot of stuff it's going to say to do, and it's full of crap, and we don't need to do those, really. So. It asks you to do this import thing, and this is just to test whether this stuff is actually working. Um, it's not particularly necessary. We do need to make sure these are all installed though. TK is actually under a different name now, but it's part of the default um, install. So we don't need that. So the big thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead go back here, you're going to get your Python and you're going to install it. And mine's already installed, so you won't be able to see what it actually says. But when you install it at the bottom of that box, it's going to say something like add to path. And you're going to want to do that so that it adds to the path. That way when we do this, we open up the command prompt. There it's here. You're going to do this command Python minus minus version. So let's grab that. And we're ready to go. And it's showing that in my path, no matter where I go, it's pulling Python 3.5.0. This is particularly important if you're using another version of Python for some reason you have it installed. It needs to be running 3.5.0 at the path or you're going to have problems. So as long as that says 3.5.0 from any directory you run it from, we're golden. So that's the big one. So we'll get back up. The next one is installing the modules. And again, that's just easy here. We're going to do pip install and then the name of the module. And that's these modules listed here. We don't actually need to download the wheel files. It will actually download them for you. Um, so just pip install. NumPy and it's already installed here and you can see it tells you the version number. If it's not installed you'll see a little progress bar and a lot of stuff come up. Same thing with all the other ones, GDoll, Pillow, and PyProj. Again, same deal, install And we'll do the same thing for those. It seems complicated. The PDF makes it way more complicated than it needs to be. And that's annoying. 
There's no reason at all that that needs to be that complicated. Make sure I'm actually getting all this that I'm talking. Because it'd be cool. As far as installing Image Magic goes, it's simple. Just download it from the link here and install that. Also, optionally, you can install GIMP. Again, pretty easy to do. Just go to the GIMP website and download it and install that. Now we get into the issues with the program itself. And I don't need two of these running because I forgot I already have one running. So yeah, once you get it running, you're going to get this screen. And here's where things get annoying because things don't do what they seem to do. And I don't trust it to actually do anything you think it's going to do. As far as getting the build mesh, um, he is right about that. The other website is far better than the USGS. Um, and I'll link that there. And that's this uh, viewfinder panoramas.org. And you can get the height files here. And these seem to be far more accurate as far as X-Plane is concerned than the USGS files that I've looked at. Well, the USGS files turn out some really funky geometry in the mesh. These seem to do what we need to do for the sim. And you're just going to click on the square you want for the area you're going to do. Like for the example we're going to use of uh, San Francisco here. It's the J10 block. And you just click on it and download it. Now as far as finding the tile that you want to do within those tiles, Disgracepilot has so conveniently provided me with how you can find that off of Sky Vector. And it's based on the southwest corner of the tile going for the tile that is that it makes up of north and east of it. So uh, 37123 comprises the tile that we want here. And that's the one degree tile. Uh, there's a lot of water here. This one's going to encode relatively quick. Uh, for you. And they're looking like at zoom level 16, they're taking up about 2 gigs a tile, roughly. So that'll help you figure out. You can look at the uh, tile corners down here to figure out where in the tile it's going to be. So, next, getting all this to work, you're going to want to go ahead and install 7zip. There is a problem with pulling the overlay for the custom overlay directory. There are two ways to get around this. Uh, one is you can install 7-zip and move the files from your C colon program files, 7-zip, and uh, it's 7-zip.dll, 7-zip.exe, and 7-zip.dll, and move those into the ortho 4xp utilities folder and replace what's there. Uh, there are older versions for some reason they're not extracting the DSF files correctly. Or alternatively, apparently it turns out, the DSFs are compressed and you can extract them manually. Um, the first time you do this you're going to think it's not working. Because when you extract it, you're going to get a folder with the same name, and you're going to see another DSF inside. This is actually the, un the extracted, uncompressed one, and you can use that. Once again, the program doesn't act the way you think it would. You can't just point it at the DSF. It does need the exact file structure for it to be able to find it. That file structure needs to be identical to either the X-Plane default nav data folder or your HD scenery nav data folder. And that's, you can have any folder name at the top level. It's going to have to have earth nav data. And then you're going to have to have a folder for the 10 degree block that that particular one degree block comes from. In the case of the San Francisco tile, which is 37123, it's going to have to be in a folder called the positive 30, negative 130. And that's going to have to be in the Earth Nav data folder. So once you get all that set up, you have two options. Um, you can pull from, in this case, I'm pulling the extracted file, and I'm just pointing it at it that way. 
And you can do that in any step um, you want here. So that's pretty easy. So far, mixed with transparency tends to, I've seen to look the best. I haven't really tried explain or photo real only. Explain only may look pretty good. Um, I haven't tried it yet. Give it a try. See if you like it. If not, you go to mixed. Photo real, I don't think looks good at all, unless water texture. If you can't run the explain water reflection stuff at all and you have that completely turned off, you may want to go to photo real only. Uh, but mix seems to look the nicest. The first thing you want to do though here is you're going to build vector data and this is a fairly useful step and it happens pretty quick so I can actually do that while I'm streaming if I want. I'll make sure we're not getting any, uh, it's actually being able to stream it doesn't hit my CPU too hard. It is useful because um, you can see what airports are in the block and that lets you double check that the block that you want is indeed the block. Well, in this case, we see that KSFO is in this block, so we have the correct block. The vector data, again, is pretty simple. Um, you can do some other things here um, that are more advanced that will help you make the tiles look a little bit nicer, but this is just getting this up and running, getting some basic stuff going. Uh, the next trick is building the mesh. And again, you, once you go ahead and download that file, we will come back with the right window here. Did I close it? I closed it. And then, uh, ortho. Uh, okay. So we're in here. We have the J10. open the J10 and we're looking for 37, 123 and since it's actually giving northwest, positive is north, negative is west. So, well, I it open. That's okay. so looking for north 37, west 123. Grab that. You can put it anywhere you want. I put mine over here in the elevation data. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll edit that out, but oh well. And in theory, it should find it in the elevation data um, if you follow the tutorial with the built-in stuff. But once again, I don't trust this thing at all to actually find things on its own. So we'll go ahead and click custom DME file. We're going to go to ortho. We're going to elevation data. And we are going to grab that height file. Pretty simple. Again, you're just going to click build base mesh. It's going to do a bunch of stuff and give you a bunch of messages over here. And again, getting back to the overlay, a couple things when you do the overlay build here. Uh, if you see it take almost no time at all, it didn't work. If it takes a little bit of time and you see any polys come up, it worked. Pretty simple. Next step, you're just going to go ahead and click build mask. And once that done, is done, go ahead and click Build Tile. And this is going to take anywhere 15, 20, 30 minutes or longer, depending on your CPU speed, um, cores, threads, all that fun stuff. Um, I have the tile already built and ready to go, since doing it on the stream would be silly and not very nice with the streaming, because it will use all of your CPU. So once it finishes, you're going to end up with a couple folders in your ortho to XP folder here. And this is pretty straightforward for anyone that's been dealing with scenery. You're going to have an overlays folder, which is going to have all your auto gen um, objects and your road networks in it. And then you're going to have the actual scenery folder. So you go ahead and copy those over to your x folder, or your x scenery folder, uh, just like any other scenery. It's already labeled uh, Y and Z. Now I do a little thing because I'm lazy and I don't feel like I think deleting the scenery pack every time is silly. Um, so throw them in here, go ahead and launch the sim, get up to the quick flight window, close the sim, open up the scenery folder, and it's going to have a, both the files listed at the top. Go ahead and cut them uh, both down, cut them out, and paste them back in the bottom here. Uh, you want to have it organized as they wanted it to with the Y, Z, 
And the reason I don't like deleting the scenery folder is it means resorting all your libraries and all of your airports again, instead of just moving two files or two lines down to the bottom. It's a lot quicker. Um, subsequently, in future sceneries that you build, you can leave this in here. It takes up a little bit of space. It's going to get bigger the more you do, though. Um, you may want to delete the old ones. You can go ahead and just copy this folder out, or even just go straight in and grab the specific DSF. Go into the overlays, because the overlay folder isn't going to change, and then you can just put them directly in here. These will be, you'll need one of these for each block right now until we can figure out a way to do multiple blocks in one folder. It, mm, I don't know enough about the scenery if you can just lump them into one folder. Uh, if any of you guys in the uh, team speak know if that'll actually work, let me know and uh, I'll give it a try. But that's pretty easy and then it's just a matter of running the sim and you're done and it should work. Um, if you're not seeing the overlay, which is the road networks of the autogen, then again, something is wrong with the DSF skimming. And you're going to have to go back and check to see if it's actually extracting that. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's otherwise pretty easy. Once you figure that out, it's just give it the right input files and click the buttons and go. Uh, Zoom level 16 looks pretty good and does it renders that pretty quick for a test. Honestly, 16 is plenty flyable for GA and airliners for sure. If you're flying tube liners, 16 is more than good enough. And even from the air, you're not going to make a huge difference. Um, I'll do another video with more advanced features, such as multiple zoom levels in one tile set, which lets you put higher zoom levels in around airports and areas you're going to be flying lower around. So that'll look a little bit nicer. Uh, but otherwise, that's just basic primer on getting this working. The instructions just make it look way, way more complicated than it needs to be. Um, once it's working, it's a pretty quick process. Uh, hopefully, everyone can now get that working. Uh, so if anyone has any other questions about getting that working, uh, just go ahead and type them into the chat and let me know. And uh, we'll take a look and see what we can do to get people's stuff working. If anyone else is uh, here that wants to know about this, let's see, what are we doing on the viewer list? Yeah, a few people. So yeah, that covers that. I'll put this up on YouTube and include a few other links to getting this all going. But that's pretty simple. Uh, what is in here again? Close up some other stuff. Running. Let's see, anything else I can go over on this? Not really. Um, the patch stuff I haven't quite figured out again once I get a more handle on doing that. Pretty much anything that may be looking a little bit off is fixable. I mean, it's pretty flexible software in general. The guy who wrote it did a really good job on the software itself, which just unfortunately the instructions were not written well and made it far more complicated than it needed to be. All those tests and stuff don't really need to be done. If you can click on it and it runs, it runs. If it's not set up right or it's missing something, it just won't run. So, and this is what I was saying about the quick flight setup here. If you have that turned on, once you get to here, you can close the sim and then reorganize your files without deleting the whole INI file, which is just silly to delete it and reorganize everything for two lines. Uh, so we'll go ahead and load up SFO. And that'll take a little bit to load up here. And that's what I was saying at the beginning here was the Mr. X uh, SFO plus the photo scenery tile that I had previously made just before the stream. And again, that took 15 minutes or so to make that tile. Turned out around 2.2 .2 gigs. 
So, I mean, that's really not terrible as far as that goes. I have noticed the scenery tiles for this are a little bit more optimized as far as frame rate goes compared to the old Sim Haven scenery. Um, so that works really well. And it does seem to be a little bit more frame optimized than Google X to XPL overlaid on the HD mesh. And the meshes, I think, are as good or maybe better than the HD mesh V3. So that's also a thing. If nothing else, the um, very well done masked edges are definitely a plus to having uh, these photo meshes over any of the other meshes um, that are available. I mean, that's something that's drove me up the wall in X-Plane is the, especially along the coastlines, is the, the edges of the mesh have just looked absolutely awful with 45 degree and 90 degree angles all over the place, and this does an amazing job of hiding that. Um, it is entirely, it makes it look like a completely different sim. Um, if your scenery otherwise isn't very heavy, you should be able to get 30 plus frame rate. <coughs> Excuse me, getting a little cold out of it without a problem at all. And of course, that explain takes forever to load. Let's see if I can go over to. Of course. I'd have to restart this thing. It's probably. Yeah, it doesn't want to switch over to game capture mid thing. Well, whatever, we'll just keep using window capture. So, any questions on that from anyone that's here at all? I think we've lost some people. Uh, disgraced or anyone if you're still here? I guess everyone else left or muted. Um, if you guys have. Yeah, you have any? You guys have any other questions um, about getting that running? Now that I've kind of explained how to get it running, or have I pretty much covered everything that people found confusing? I will assume by the silence that I have covered the things that people wanted to know about that. And I'll go ahead and put this up on YouTube here tonight uh, with all the links to get all the pieces of the puzzle together that you need. So it's basically get 7-zip, get image magic, get GIMP, and then try install things using the pip install module name instead of the wheels. It should give you the latest versions. You won't have to go looking and digging for the full version names. So that should help you out there. Um, instead of having to dig through the repository. Otherwise, um, go ahead and grab the stuff off the link in the install directory for the repository files. And basically there's what you'll do instead. I can still get it open. I don't. Is you're just going to hold down shift and then right click and open terminal from there. And you'll just type pip space install like I showed before. And then just start typing the module name and hit tab and it'll auto complete to the module names that from the wheel files you downloaded. And it'll install from the wheel files directly instead of getting them through the package manager. And that should do it. And then hopefully, if you follow my tutorial here using uh, the square here for on SFO, you should have this very, very nice looking scenery around XFO. There's still a few little glitches here and there with the mesh. Um, it can probably be worked out pretty easily, but for the most part it looks really nice. And it does indeed match the uh, Mr. X tiles here, so it looks pretty good. But I'm going to uh, kill the stream here and let Chevy get on with his. I may be back later tonight with a few other things. So. User joined your channel. Uh, 